And our last presenter, Mr. Alex, come on down. You're the next presenter. Cool. Oh, close. Cool. 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 Close. It's only been a decade. <laughs> so Alex presented at NYVR back in 2014. You have Don't worry. I got you have it? Yeah. Nice. You embarrassed me last uh, during the webinar, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embarrass myself. <laughs> I wanted to do this before DJ could do it. Yeah. <laughs> So there I am. That's uh, that's the first representative. <laughs> I'm so young and innocent, and uh, using a, a DK2 with that. Um, hi everyone. Good to see you. My name's Alex Coulomb, and I know, right? Yeah. Good times. Um, and this slide is definitely stolen from an Unreal Engine talk, so you'll see. I immediately start by saying, like, I'm an Unreal Engine authorized instructor. Not the most important thing about me, but it is true. Um, and I have a background in architecture and theater. I've uh, been involved with a lot of different projects over the years, particularly architecture and theater projects, uh, among offshoots of that. been working in VR since the Oculus Rift DK1. Uh, there I am in my DK1. And then in AR, I actually started using for my architecture thesis back when I was turning 4J on Governor's Island into a crazy immersive theater. And uh, the AR is in the upper right. I have like a little webcam marker based thing where you can see everything going on inside. And I have this XR Creative Studio called Agile Lens. Uh, sometimes people call us an XR SWAT team, and a recent client referred to us as XR SEAL Team 6, which I appreciate. Um, so here's a quick example of like recent architecture projects. I'm not going to dwell on these too much because we're doing less architectural work these days than we did David Geffen Hall in Lincoln Center. We had a VR experience. Uh, that allowed people to go into a mocked up, built out version of the balconies there and get a sense of what it act would actually feel like to grab the railings and like be at different heights and lean over and be like, do I have vertigo? Yes, I do have vertigo. And uh, last thing I want to mention is that we have an, an podcast, a podcast called the Unofficial Unreal Engine Podcast. I co-host this with Jake Feldman, who works at a cool cloud computing company called Four Week. We just did a, a very popular episode about the Apple Vision Pro. I don't know why so many people downloaded that one, but that was cool. Typically, when I'm giving a talk, um, I would kind of progress through these phases of talking about the work we've done in real architecture, the work we've done in real theater, and then progress to virtual architecture, virtual theater, and then hybrid approaches. But I want to keep this close to 10 minutes. We might bleed over a little bit. So we're going to keep this talk just about general cool stuff. We're going to do like a slide each for most of these projects, running through very quick stuff that I hope you find interesting. And if you want to talk about any of this in more detail later on, please come find me. I got like some demos and whatnot in the back. So first, uh, live MetaHumans in VR. When MetaHumans came out in Unreal Engine in April of 2021, we got real excited. Um, we've been working at different platforms that had limited performance capture in the past, and suddenly we had the ability to uh, play with things in a much more exciting way. Oh, let me see if I've got some audio here. Some of these do have audio, so let me see if I've got the right output real quick. I mean, that seems like it should be audio. I can also pretend that I'm the audio. That's fine. Um, this is, oh, look at me! Um, this is Kevin Lateson and uh, Brandon Powers doing some tests for us in the Agilent's office right after many humans came out. We were playing with amazing that actually felt to be inside of VR headset while someone was performing in VR. And that led to things like our production of Christmas Carol, which we do every December, forever and ever and ever. Uh, we've got Ari Tar playing Scrooge from his living room in Oregon, and uh, all sorts of crazy ghosts that come and attack him. You know how the story goes. And what's been quite fun about this, uh, besides just being a bit of a sandbox for our different uh, virtual reality ambitions for live theater, is that uh, we've been able to mix and match elements that we've taken from real theater. So the original director of the piece, Robert Barry Fleming, had a crack team of uh, his folks down for Actors Theater of Louisville. And we actually started by doing this production both as something that happened in their physical space, where our many humans rendered lovingly by Rob Lester were projected onto screens inside the actual space, while the uh, virtual show took those meta humans and the force were spatialized. We could change their scale, we could make the ghost of Christmas present 50 feet tall, and flying around in VR as little other ghosts were collectively haunting Scrooge, you really get a, a beautiful sense of that scale. Um, there's Greg Moppin, who played Scrooge in the physical production, and of course we take you know, the drawings by the costume designers, 
add up to theater and bring that into our experience. What we found was quite nice about working on this particular production, which uh, made its way into our other virtual reality theater work uh, moving toward the future, is that when we take people from theater who are interested in what this technology can do, it's often quite nice to show them that it's not that different from what they are used to. So Robert Berry Fleming, as the director, never put on a VR headset before, and he was able to do things like sit down in Louisville while Ari is over in Oregon, and pretend he's basically in a black box theater and watch Ari rehearse. And he can give Ari the exact same kind of acting notes he would to a regular actor. Uh, he might play with things like changing his costume. We did fun things like swap out the script in his hand for a candle, but it actually felt pretty natural for him. And uh, I've been working with Ari for years. I just met him for the very first time last week in LA at the Next Stage Summit. Um, most of the people involved with Christmas Carol have still never met Ari. Uh, one fun thing that we've been doing with our theater work is finding ways to simplify it. I was presenting last year at an event in Seoul called the Seoul Performing Arts Festival, and they told me very last minute that they wanted to do a live show. Huh, they're like, can you play scripture? I'm like, I sure can try. And they're like, we're going to have a Korean actor who wants to play all the goose parts. And I said, I don't think we can do that. And they're like, can you try? I'm like, okay. Uh, so we had June on our team whip up a version of Christmas Carol that uh, is basically karaoke, where we actually give like the prompting of the script on the screen. This is actually Ari uh, trying this experience out for the first time last week at the Next Stage Summit. And the idea is basically that we keep everything pre-recorded with the body capture, which was done with Xsense and Rococo, and now we're using Move AI and capturing and programs like that. And then we're just using the Live Link app to let people go and take control of the characters um, entirely through a phone. And so that's what we did in Korea. We had people viewing the whole thing in VR, and that was pretty cool. Ari's biggest request over the past couple years has been that he doesn't want to be looking at a phone when he's performing. He wants to be performing from inside VR. So I've been playing a lot over the past couple of years with uh, the Vive Focus 3 and the XR Elite and the MediQuest Pro and different headsets that have facial tracking to see if we can start to translate this data over to a MediHuman. It's not natural, it's not something that any of these SDKs are doing a great job of on their own, but I've got some janky spaghetti code right now that is trying to make this work, and we're on the right path. I also have uploaded this entire project to GitHub, so if anyone wants to keep uh, messing with this, please do. We're also having a lot of fun starting to play with AI in MetaHumans, and uh, we're doing a project that is premiering right now with Infinite Reality in London for London Technique. This is a totally AI MetaHuman who is uh, responding to you, talking to her about the car behind. You can say, can I see the car in blue? And tell me about the tires. How many uh, you know, electricities does it get? And she'll do her best to answer all these questions, like a very sophisticated chatbot, and it's quite nice. Um, in this one, this is interesting, you can't hear it, but in the first clip, she is, um, much more robotic sounding. Here, we haven't gotten the lips moving yet, but she actually sounds much more natural. And this is through using a plugin called In World AI, which is very exciting. Um, for Hacker Theater, I wanted to touch on a production we did last year uh, called The Orchard Off Broadway with Mikhail Brishnikov and Jessica Hecht. We had a digital twin at the Brishnikov Art Center where people were seeing uh, an actual live production of the show inside the theater. And then we got to take the virtual audience on a bit of a crazy mind numbing, not numbing, mind exploding tour uh, of the Brishnikov Art Center with all sorts of crazy things happening um, in these different rooms and these different spaces. You'd always start with something that was physically based in the real Brishnikov Art Center, and then you go off into something that's a little bit more um, insane. So this was really fun to use uh, pixel screening and giving uh, the entire virtual audience from around the world opportunities to do things like this, which you would never do in the real world, uh, pulling things out of Brishnikov's chest. Um, also with pixel screening, which we use a lot of because a lot of our projects are very high-end, photorealistic, require high-end hardware, we've been working more with um, architecture firms and our friends at Fisher Dax Associates to have a very simple way to allow anyone to export 3D models using DataSmith and having certain coding for just based on the name of the DataSmith files you export, starting to set them up so that they can easily be uh, streamed into the cloud and uh, start to set up different kinds of interactivity. So for a theater, jumping to every seat, uh, cycling through different design options, what's on stage, an orchestra, a Shakespeare production, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is using something in Unreal called the Collab Viewer Template. Anyone can download it and check it out. And the great thing about it is it has out of the box multiplayer, and you can do uh, VR and non-VR as part of the same shared session. Um, I can't talk about this project too much, but I want to just mention briefly. We have been involved since December with something called Four Seasons Private Residences on Lake Austin. It is a $1.2 billion, crazy, wonderful architectural real estate project. 
And uh, here's a couple quotes from a recent article about it. I can't wait to show you more pictures and videos of that kind of stuff. But it, I, I was contacted by like uh, nine people. I'll try to name some of them. Kim Bauman Larson, Jeff Model, uh, Matthew Bannister, uh, Vikas Reddy, Jeff Powers, Paul Bevick, all sorts of folks who are like, hey, uh, I know this guy who's trying to make like the most photorealistic architecture project of all time. Do you think you can help? And I said, I sure will try. That's always what I say about these projects. And so uh, we now have this thing out in uh, Austin. This is the only thing I can show you is our crazy custom OffiTrack 3D printed setup to make this local experience of walking through $300 million of amenities and local multiplayer. And uh, it's a pretty darn photorealistic tour. And we've had all sorts of fun Texas celebrities go through it. And if you ask them later what you know certain people uh, might have said about the experience, I'm happy to share that in private. Um, another thing we've been doing that's an influencer in our work more and more lately is compositing Stereo 360 together. Um, this was one where we had an entirely Unreal Engine backdrop, motion graphics composited in, and then a uh, fisheye stereo lens from Canon in here, so that's kind of what it would look like before it's composited. And I only bring that up very briefly to say that now, when we work on projects like Passion and Sagoon San Marcos, sorry for pronunciation, um, down in Louisville, not Louisville, in uh, Tennessee, and why am I thinking of the name of Clarksville? Thank you, Jackie. Um, then we start to have these fun opportunities to take all the different tools and techniques we're working on and bring them all together. So here's wit on the ground, and you can't hear it, which is sad because it's so beautiful, but we have Gregory, the conductor, conducting this beautiful piece. We have the chorus in the back singing. Uh, we have guitar starting up, some gnarly guitar, and then awesome singing. And what we're doing uh, during this patch session, which was after the live shows, we captured the live show, so during the patch session, we are getting depth data from um, DepthKit. We are getting 360 and stereo 180 data. Jackie, Witt, Kevin Leaves, and myself are all there on site. And uh, then we also got some motion capture data. So this is called a um, Capoeira Dance. And we, this was our first time playing with Move AI. We set up like an iPad and like a couple Android phones. They weren't even the same model. And it came out pretty good. So we've just got this embarrassment of riches, about two terabytes of different data uh, that we now are going to put together as like a 90 minute YouTube video that just kind of goes through the entire show and you can do it in VR. And then here's what Wit is focusing on over Immunity, which is meant to be uh, this great uh, volumetric scan, this point cloud data of the entire theater that you can then walk around in and you can stick your head into these different bubbles that will then give you the stereo 360 or stereo 180 footage of the show uh, from different moments. And it's very powerful. This was far enough one of the most incredible live experiences that I've ever seen in my life. And I feel very privileged that we now get to uh, evangelize this and try to get more than the 200 or so people who saw it live in Tennessee uh, to bring this to schools and festivals around the world. So look forward to seeing more from that. Here's a nice VFX graph from Wit. Good job, Wit. And then I kind of want to wrap up just mentioning a couple things that are on the horizon that are very exciting, uh, like WebXR pixel streaming. So right now, if you want to have a very high-end Unreal Engine experience um, and you want to stream it over the internet like we were doing with Christmas Carol, you need someone to sideload an app. And if they're not a developer who's dealt with sideloading, it's a little bit painful for them. But I've been poking all the right people at Epic Games for a little while now, and I finally got them to include an experimental feature, which we're calling WebXR Pixel Streaming. And what this basically allows you to do is stream an Unreal Engine experience through WebXR. And what that means is you have one link, and you can go to that link in your browser or on your Chromebook and access a non-VR experience there. Or you go to that exact same link inside your MetaQuest browser or your Vive browser or your Vario browser. And then you are basically activating a, uh, a full VR experience without having to download or sideload anything. And right now, the latency, not so great. It does need some predictive algorithms, uh, synchronous space warp and whatnot, to make this a better experience. But the core here is we're working on reducing friction and making it as easy as possible to access uh, the most photoreal VR experiences that we can possibly dream up. So that's exciting. And also, I have to mention, this is my silly AI rendering of the future of the Apple Vision Pro. This is going to be a, a good way to get through uh, to this headset if they continue to be sad about Unreal Engine and block everything Epic does. You could go into WebXR and get your Unreal Engine experiences in that way. Here's my like much further in the future. You could be in this happy world, like looking at you know green things. The whole world around you is burning. That's a good future. <laughs> and uh, XR Kids. 
this was a previous podcast I had with a friend of mine where we talked a lot about raising our kids in VR. I figured, I've talked about this in previous NYVR talks, but I wanted to give a little update. It's going really well, guys. Uh, my kids have remarkable spatial reasoning. Uh, what I'm showing here is a little clip from a wonderful VR game called Another Fisherman's Tale, and my five-year-old is solving a puzzle here that I was warned in advance that a lot of playtesters have gotten stuck on, and it was like, if you need like a whole walkthrough, we'll send you like a 10-minute video to go through the whole thing, and like, I popped my five-year-old in there, he had the whole thing worked out uh, in not too long a time. So, just want to say, you know, small doses, don't leave your kid in VR as like a babysitter, but curated, you know, co-parenting with that VR headset uh, is, is really powerful, and I've seen my kids learn remarkable uh, skills from that. Uh, finally, I just want to wrap up with kind of building on that. Uh, a recent event that happened that I think was just a great um, marker of how wonderful the VR community is. There was a Saturday where a bunch of us found out that there was a uh, four-year-old girl in the UK who was dying of cancer and her kind of you know, last wish for her last birthday was she wanted to be a mermaid. And so a bunch of people in the VR community came together and made, I think, six total different experiences to help that happen for her. This was with a company called VR Therapies. Um, a bunch of folks at Agile Lens came together last minute and uh, made this experience with a, a cake that's made of coral. Uh, we uh, recorded a bunch of actors saying a bunch of things to the girl who's named Zainab. And we have all these lovely little animations and cute little you know cat mermaids that come through here and uh, say hi to you. And it was just one of those things where like it was 48 hours, no one was getting paid anything, but you saw a bunch of people drop what they were doing and uh, go through and make this really lovely experience that she got to experience. And now her brother and her family have all these great memories and these actual experiences to have uh, for themselves. So happy to talk more about that. And we do have that experience if anyone wants to. Uh, try it out. And uh, when I was thinking about like how to wrap up this talk, I did this last week too. I was like, I need some kind of end slide. And we did a project for Dell, which we don't have time to talk about today. But we, we tried fixing some weird facial capture stuff. And so uh, we had like, you know, something that was too frowny, and then we fixed it to be a little bit more smiley. So it was like, yeah, you saw my talk, and now you're a little happier, or something like that. <laughs> um, and that is, I don't know what this is, but just watch this for like 10 seconds, and then I'm going to pretend that I can't get it to stop playing. And then um, maybe in a few days, you can uh, remember that you saw this, and then we'll talk about it more. But you know, there's exciting things happening. Uh, thanks, everyone. That's all. <laughs>